In this lesson, we're looking at measuring biodiversity, but specifically Simpson's Diversity Index. It is actually one of our mandatory practicals and takes on board the information we have spoken about previously. Right, so our aim is to determine species diversity of a group of organisms based on the SDI, the Simpson's Diversity Index. There are a number of ways to consider diversity in an ecosystem, which we have spoken about, but obviously these types of measurements will be used in field work and require samples from the field. So we're going to, to focus on Simpson's Diversity Index, assuming we have taken field measurements. Counts of various organisms do need to be done by first classifying the organisms and then determining their diversity in a particular region. So let's look at some field data from two particular areas of grassland with flowers growing here. We've got daisies, dandelions and buttercups. We've got area one and area two. Now our measurements of diversity include our richness, our evenness, our percentage cover, percentage frequency and our SDI. Now without quadrat data, we are unable to make any judgments about percentage cover and percentage frequency. So we don't need to focus on them and we're just going to worry about these two to start, or well, these three, my apologies, to start with. All right, let's look at species richness in area one and area two. Remembering we are using Menonix index there for richness. So a simple tally to start with is to say, okay, well, how many uh, species do we have in each area? We've got one, two, three. Well, amazing. Okay, so our richness is going to equal, I'm not going to write richness, okay, I am, is going to equal S over square root of N, a capital N, we need to be careful with that. And our, if we have a look up here, S is the total number of different species. So we have three and capital N is the uh, total number of individual organisms at overall. So there's our square root of a thousand. So if we calculate that out, here's one I prepared earlier, that is what we end up with. Now we can have a look at area two and say we've actually got one, two, three here. We're going to have the same numbers in this equation. So we're going to end up with the exact same richness because we have the same number of species across that. So it's useful, but it doesn't really tell us that much. If we start to consider evenness, we know that that is going to consider more about which species might be dominating. We can have a look here at area one. We've got a 300, a 335 and a 365. So if we could easily make that into percentages, you know, a 30%, 33.5%, 30%, a 36.5%. And that's nice even, right? There's no one species dominating. If you look across to area two, however, we've got 2%, about 5% and then about 93%. So we can see that this species is dominating the buttercup and therefore we have very different uh, types of evenness or abundance, relative abundance in, this, in these two areas. If we go across to calculate our SDI, here is our formula and we need to become very familiar with that formula. Remembering that SDI is going to take into consideration the numbers of each species as well as the total number of species together. Right, so small n is the number of individuals of each species. Capital N is the total number of organisms of all species, so the thousand, right? This is our capital N, and these are all going to be different little n's along the way. Here is some working I have prepared earlier. Now you can see that this sigma here is going to be the sum of the n multiplied by n minus 1. So if we just take the daisies, we've got the n here and this is n minus 1. This is really easy working to do if we only have a small number of species. If we have a large number, we can find other ways to do it. So 300 times 299 plus 335 times 334. The mouse is quite easy as long as we are organizing ourselves well. And what we end up with is 0 0.665. If we do the exact same thing, same formula, same strategy with our area two, we are substituting our numbers in, so 20 times 19 plus 49 times 48. Suddenly we can see that this dominating species is going to have quite a heavy influence on this formula. So what we end up with is a much larger number on there before we subtract it from one and we will end up with a much smaller number here. So we've got really high diversity in area one versus low diversity in area two. And we can understand that because we've got that dominating species, it's removing that diversity as opposed to having relatively even spread of abundance across the three uh, species there. 
Another way we can do this when we have more species is to use a table, right? We can organize our field data into a table of values. And we look at this list in the same way we look at a frequency table. To find the rest of the values for our SDI calculation, we can arrange it in any subsequent columns, right? So if we need n, we need n minus one as well, and we need n times n minus one uh, to organize ourselves. So it's really easy to straight away add an n minus one column. And with some of these numbers, like you can see, we've got a few zeros popping up and that's going to impact us later on when we do n times n minus one. So here we are and we can see there's some zeros popping up into our formula, but conveniently in our formula, we require the sum of all the n times n minus ones. So we've got the sum of all the n times n minus one all down there, okay? So we substitute that in straight away, 64 over the total here of 15, right? The capital N, remembering our total is our capital N, take N minus one, and we get a value that is 0 0.3. So it's not great, right? Now, I am going to invite you to work through this problem yourself and check your answers afterwards. Uh, I want you to calculate the richness, uh, look at the evenness, and then also consider SDI. I will pop the uh, answers up on the screen and you can pause it when you need them. Okay, so try this problem yourself. So this is what we have covered this lesson. Remember, it is our mandatory practical to be able to determine species diversity using a particular index. We are using Simpson's diversity index, and that is up here in our guidance as well.